In the world of RF and ham radio, coaxial cables are ubiquitous, and so are the myths that surround them. Many of these misconceptions persist because they seem intuitive or stem from analogies to low frequency or DC systems. For example, thinking that thicker always means better or that sealing a connector alone is enough to prevent water ingress. But the reality is more complex. Signal frequency, dielectric materials, braid quality, and insulation environment all play critical roles in how coax performs. This presentation will unpack the top 10 coaxial cable myths and contrast them with technical truths. Understanding these distinctions helps ensure better system performance, reliability, and longevity in RF applications, especially as demands increase at higher frequencies. Myth number one, thicker coax always has lower loss. The belief that thicker coaxial cable always results in lower loss is a common one, but it is rooted in oversimplification. In DC or low frequency AC wiring, resistance does decrease with thicker conductors, and that's true to a point in RF applications as well. However, RF signals behave differently. They primarily travel along the surface of the conductor, a phenomenon known as the skin effect. As frequency increases, signal penetrations into the conductor decreases, making factors like surface area and conductor smoothness more relevant than bulk thickness. Additionally, the dielectric type, shield quality, and manufacturing precision can significantly affect performance. For instance, LMR240 with a foam dielectric may perform better on UHF than older, thicker RG213. Choosing coax should therefore be based on application-specific data, not assumptions about size. Myth number two, coax loss is the same at all frequencies. One of the more pervasive myths is that coaxial cable loss remains constant regardless of frequency. This misunderstanding often originates from cable specs listing a single loss value, such as x dB per 100 feet, without explicitly stating the frequency at which that measurement was made. In reality, loss increases significantly with frequency. This is due to the skin effect which confines current to smaller cross-sectional areas at higher frequency and also due to the dielectric losses that grow with increasing signal frequency. For instance, a typical run of RG8X coax may experience only 1 dB of loss at 3.5 MHz, but that figure jumps dramatically to over 6 dB at UHF 450 MHz. Knowing this is essential for designing high-frequency systems like satellite or repeater links where coax loss can severely degrade signal integrity. Myth number three, you can judge coax quality by its weight. The tactile sense of weight can be misleading when evaluating coaxial cable quality. In power cabling, heavier usually means thicker copper and lower resistance, so it's easy to see why people apply that thinking to coax. However, the performance of coax relies on more nuanced engineering factors. For example, coax weight can be heavily influenced by the outer jacket material. Manufacturers might use an extra thick or denser PVC to make cable feel premium while skimping on shield coverage or dielectric quality. A heavy cable might have poor braid density, leading to higher leakage and lower shielding effectiveness. True performance metrics come from electrical characteristics like return loss, shield effectiveness, and loss per unit of length at target frequencies. Always consult the technical data sheet rather than trusting your arm. Myth number four, coax is immune to water ingress if connectors are sealed. While it's true that sealing coaxial connectors is essential, it's a myth that doing so makes the entire coax run immune to water ingress. Water is persistent and can find its way into the cable through far less obvious paths than the conductor. Moisture can wick along the braid or find microscopic cracks in the outer jacket, especially in cables subjected to UV exposure or mechanical stress. Over time, capillary action can draw water deep into the coax, degrading performance without any visible sign at the sealed connector. Once inside, water can cause severe issues, higher loss, impedance mismatch, and even long-term corrosion. Preventing this requires using waterproof rated or flooded coax for outdoor runs and sealing vulnerable sections along the entire cable length, not just the end. <clears throat> Myth number five, all 50 ohm coax performs the same. The belief that all 50 ohm coaxial cables are interchangeable is misleading. While they share nominal impedance, many other performance factors can vary dramatically across cable types. For example, RG58, RG213, and LMR400 are all 50 ohm but they differ in attenuation, shielding effectiveness, and power handling, and mechanical flexibility. LMR400 uses a foam dielectric for lower loss, while RG58 may be chosen for its compact form factor at a cost of higher attenuation.
Each cable's construction, such as braid density, core material, and jacket quality affect how it performs in specific applications. So choosing coax should be based on a use case requirement, not just impedance. A one-size-fits-all approach can compromise signal efficiency and reliability. Myth number six, you can bury any coax if you seal the ends. It's a common DIY approach to bury coaxial cable and seal the ends with waterproof tape, assuming this protects the entire run. While sealing the ends helps, it is not a substitute for using cable actually rated for burial. Standard coax jackets, often PVC, can still absorb moisture or allow slow ingress via microscopic cracks. Over time, water can reach the braid and dielectric, degrading performance and introducing loss, even if no water appears at the ends. To ensure reliability for underground runs, choose cables specifically labeled for direct burial. These often use gel-filled or flooded construction to block water from migrating through the cable body, preserving electrical properties long-term. Myth number seven, the braid is only for shielding. The idea that coaxial braid exists solely to shield against electromagnetic interference is misleading. In RF systems, the braid serves two critical roles, shielding and conducting part of the RF signal. Because RF signals travel in the form of surface currents, the outer conductor, often the braid, carries a portion of the signal energy. This means that deficiencies in braid quality, such as sparse coverage or poor materials, not only weaken shielding effectiveness, but can also increase resistive losses and cause impedance mismatches. Furthermore, a compromised braid may allow signal leakage, reduce power handling, or make the cable more vulnerable to external noise. When selecting coax, it's vital to consider braid percentage and quality, not just the impedance rating. Myth number eight, loss in coax doesn't matter much on receive. One frequently repeated myth is that coaxial loss doesn't matter on receive, often justified by saying the noise floor is high anyway, especially on HF bands. While partially true for HF due to high atmospheric noise, this belief falls apart at VHF and UHF and above. At those frequencies, the atmospheric noise is lower, meaning the system noise, including that introduced by the coax, has a larger effect on overall signal to noise ratio. In such cases, every dB of loss counts, especially when trying to receive weak signals like low Earth orbit satellites or distant repeaters. For serious work in these bands, using low loss coax is critical. Even a modest 3 dB loss in coax means cutting the receive signal in half before it even reaches the preamp or receiver. Careful coax selection is essential to maintaining sensitivity and achieving optimal system performance. Myth number nine, SWR is always the cause of coax heating. It's a common misconception that coaxial cable heating is always caused with high standing wave ratio or SWR. While SWR can contribute to higher voltages and currents on the line, it's not the only factor that causes heating. Even with a perfect match, meaning low SWR, RF coax can still heat up under high power and high frequency. This happens due to the resistive losses in the conductor and dielectric materials. These losses increase with frequency due to the skin effect and dielectric heating, which means cables used in VHF and UHF and microwave applications are especially vulnerable. So heating doesn't automatically indicate a problem with impedance matching. It may simply mean the cable is operating near or beyond its rated capacity. That's why choosing a coax with appropriate loss characteristics for the intended frequency and power level is critical for safe and efficient operation. Myth number 10, coax lasts forever if stored indoors. Storing coax indoors does extend its life significantly, but it doesn't make it immoral. Over time, even without UV light or rain exposure, coaxial cable materials slowly degrade. This myth leads many users to over-rely on seemingly well-preserved spools that are electrically compromised. Humidity in indoor environments can be absorbed into the dielectric, especially if it's foam-based. Jacket materials may become brittle as plasticizers degrade, and the braid can corrode from airborne contaminants or residual manufacturing residues. Worse still, many of these issues may not be visible on the outside. That means visual inspection is not a reliable gauge of cable quality. Periodic testing or replacing old stock is advisable, particularly for critical applications where signal integrity matters. As we've seen, coaxial cable myths are pervasive, but also preventable. By understanding the real behaviors and characteristics of coax, RF system designers and operators can make smarter, more reliable choices. Whether it's misjudging performance based on thickness or assuming that storage means permanence, each myth obscures a technical truth that, when known, can dramatically improve system quality. This knowledge is especially important as frequency rise and margin shrink in modern communication systems. The key takeaway is this, rely on data, specs, and verified design principles, not on assumptions or rules of thumb. 
In the high-frequency world of RF, accuracy and attention to detail are the best tools that you have. And with that, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond.